Hi Floss Tube and Instagram friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Contented Needleworker Kim. Today is April 12, 2024, and this is Floss Tube episode number 72. So you may not recognize the backdrop for me today. This is still my stitching room. It's just a small bedroom in my home. It's about eight by 10-ish, and I get to cover the walls with my stitching. I'm sitting in front of what is actually the closet in this bedroom. Um, I took off the doors and the wire shelving almost immediately upon moving in and decided it would be a better use for me to have just more display space than uh, maybe storage space. So, Let's let me talk a few about a few of the things you see around me because I do often get asked about a couple of these. The one above me is by the Scarlet Letter and it's called um, Eleanor Parr. It's a very large chart and I only stitched the border of one of the sides of Eleanor Parr. Um, I also will get asked sometimes here about Polly. You haven't seen her in a while by the Traveling Stitcher and I got her from the attic in Mesa, Arizona. And um, let's see, we haven't seen The Visitor over here to my right. That is by Fox and Rabbit. It's called The Visitor, just peeking out there. And uh, the one above me here with the flowers is Victoria's Garden by Heartstring Samplery. I haven't done a room tour in a while um, where I go around and just show you everything on my walls. And it, again, that would just take a bit of time. It's not that I don't want to do it. <laughs> It's just making sure I have time for everything. Can, as a matter of fact, can we, I have a lot of stitching to share. I really do. And my brain is going a million miles a minute right now of all the things I want to tell you about. But let's just take a few minutes. I want to talk about making floss tube videos. Now we're all different. Um, some people are very fortunate to have permanent setups where you just grab your stitching, walk in, and hit the button and start sharing your stitching on a weekly basis or maybe every other week, once a month, whatever it might be. I don't have that kind of a setup. I, I love making floss tube videos. I love the cross stitch show and tell, showing you my, um, the, my whips, my finishes, all of that. And I love hearing about yours. I you obviously know I love a sal, a stitch along, because I'm in a lot of them. <laughs> we will, you'll hear that word a lot today. Um, it's just, it's been such a blessing to make so many friends. I, again, just true friends. I, the Zooms, the, the either from Instagram or floss tube videos, I'm just so blessed. But it takes me, the way my setup is, it takes me a bit of time because, you know, lighting, gathering all my stitching. Um, I work on a lot of different projects, so that can be quite a few things. And um, just setting up, right? So it, I like to make them when I feel I'm prepared and I'm ready to go and, you know, I just, I want them to be fun for you and for me. I also broke a cardinal rule, my cardinal rule. We had, you know how when you have people coming over, you know, you want to clean your house extra clean and, and just get ready. And one of my rules is that is not the time to rearrange all of your furniture. It is not the time to redecorate. Now, I do have to often take a lot of my crafting things off of the big table because that ends up being a craft space. And so everything has to get put away. And it does help me to get more organized <laughs> when that's happening. But instead of taking the time, you know, prepping up to their visit to just clean. No, I, I moved every piece of furniture. It was, it was just, <sighs> so that took up a lot of time. That was a whole week of <laughs> doing that instead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I also have been really trying to get better organized in a lot of ways with my stitching and um, just the different areas I need for crafting. Now, the room I'm in is just for display. It's I have a stitching chair and I like to be in here when I can, you know, have a Zoom call out of the main living area and I just love to put my stitching on all the walls. But it is not enough room for me to set up a sewing station, an ironing station, a cutting station. I, I, can't, I just don't have room in here for that. So that all happens out in, in the main area. And I've been going around and around in my head with how I can do that differently. I was thinking about a she shed, but that didn't work. And then anyway, the final product now is I've been working on making a, a space in my master bedroom so that I can have a wall there where I set it up just as those things, sewing, ironing, and such. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the rabbit hole I fell down yesterday where I was trying to put a bunch of things above the wall, um, on the wall above where I'm going to be ironing. 
So that's been a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work in progress. So all that to say, a lot of these things uh, take up a lot of time. And now a month later, <laughs> we're making a Vazu video. So let's go ahead and start talking about stitching. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a bang. This first one is going to be one that I was inspired by my friend Susan Stanley by Stitch in Time. She just put out a video just last night. I caught it when I wasn't sleeping. And this is needlework panel of a fruit tree with two animals. I love the colors in this. That's what drew me to this. And then I saw Susan stitching it and I said, yeah, let's get us, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So 30 seven count corn tassel by Access Commodities Legacy Linens with the called for Avera Soif flosses. So I call, I'm per, stitching it in the silks. There's a lot of over one in this piece. This whole bottom part pretty much is over one. And then as you go up to the top, that's regular. But um, I am using the tent stitch for all of the over one, which just means just one leg instead of a full cross. And I know you see a lot of trailing fat threads. Some of them are working threads and some of them will be uh, snipped after I stitch over them. Then I will snip them from the top. And if you wanna see about, you know, things like the away, the away not start, I don't do a knot, but the away not start, um, just Google that uh, in, in YouTube and there are videos that come up. I know I've seen several recently. Um, Shelly from Antique Needleworkers did a little video on how to do some different starts. So there are videos out there. Okay, this next one is, um, it was a retreat piece for me from Quilter Station Retreat. It's by Stacy Nash. The cover is somewhere and I have decided that I'm better, my time is better spent doing other things. <laughs> the cover will show up, I will find it. <laughs> Um, it's called Trumpet of Swans, and my friend Dottie, Stitching Scotty, is also stitching this. Congratulations, Dottie, on your, um, uh, was it the gold uh, by Just Keep Stitching, Pam and Steph? I think you were called out as a gold. So um, the kit flosses. Uh, it's not the kit floss, but it's very similar to um, that uh, linen. It's 40 count. And I am going to stitch a black swan next. It's a biscornu, did I mention that? I'm gonna stitch a black swan next, and I may actually do three black swans and one white swan, depending on which one I like better. Okay, so this next one was also a retreat piece I got from the Attic Needlework when I was at Autumn Abundance, and it is by Dawn Collector with a Needle. We have a stitching group for those of us who have this piece from the retreat. And uh, Dawn is very graciously helping us figure out the basting and how to get it all laid out. And now that I have that down, it's just a matter of stitching the individual pockets and then I will have to do all the cutting. So there's some satin stitching going on in that bottom row there. And I, so I've done the first two pockets and I'm working on the third. Ideally, I'd like to maybe get through one a month. Um, next month, May, is going to be a very busy month for me, and I'm actually gonna be gone for a, a good period of time. We'll talk about that another time, but well, I'm not sure how much stitching I'll get done during that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about The Betrothed, and this is by GGR. I am making a lot of changes to this beautiful sampler. If you'd like to see it stitched in its entirety, Go watch Grace, the Paisley Stitcher, and um, actually, and make sure you catch the last several episodes with Grace because she's done some wonderful uh, interviews, floss tuber for a day, and she's done some interviews with some, friend, some friends, um, Karen Lynch from Instagram and Trisha Preb409, also from Instagram, as well as Mary Darling from Instagram. <laughs> So hence the floss tuber for a day. It was a lot of fun. I just, I loved seeing them uh, and being able to see their beautiful stitching. There's also, uh, let me, before I forget to mention it, there is also a new, in, I live in Southern California. So in San Marcos, in Southern California, there is a uh, cross, it's actually a quilting store called Grand Country Junction. And she's been carrying quilting for a long while, but now she's carrying cross stitch. And we have a gathering there, the third Saturday of every month and the fourth Saturday of every month. I'm I try to get there 
I can't get there every every month, but uh, Grace and a bunch of friends meet on the third Saturday. And then a local stitching group I have here, we actually go on the fourth Saturday. Um, it's $10 and you can apply that towards supplies. And it's been very fun to see her growing in the way of carrying uh, floss and uh, linens, fabric, not just linen, Ada, as well as, um, I think she carries, I'm pretty sure, Ada, as well as a lot of charts from market and everything. So it's been a lot of fun. So um, if you're in the area, I hope that you'll consider coming. Um, maybe call the store if you want more details. Grand Country Junction in San Marcos, California. Okay, so um, I was saying that Grace has a beautiful finish of this in its entirety, but I am stitching portions and making changes um, to it as I go. This is 40 Count Havana by Weeks Dye Works. And I'm very glad that I chose this linen, this fabric, because it can stand up to these intensely <laughs> bright color. It's like a box of crayons almost. So I'm going to put beads in those spaces. I just have to order some petite beads um, that'll fit in her dress. And if I, if you look at the cover, you can see I'm making some changes to that flower pot. I just, you know, abbreviated it. It has to go for balance now. I was originally going to go straight up, but I've decided that I have to do another one of these flowers on this side and another one of these motifs on this side. And then I'll see what I'm putting at the very top um, as I go. But it's just a work in progress, a lot of cut and paste and experimenting. And I'm, I'm actually really having a lot of fun doing that. So I got asked on Instagram about the colors that I'm using. Um, unfortunately, that's a little bit tricky for me because I pulled, there is a light colorway and a dark colorway. And I pulled from both of them and sometimes I didn't have either. And so I just made substitutions. Two of the biggest ones that I know I wanted to share with you, I'm using fragrant cloves instead of the tangerine that's called for. And I'm also using mint julep, which was not one, it wasn't called for in the chart at all, as well as um, Oki Finoki. How fun is that to say? Um, Oki Finoki is also another one of the dark greens that I subbed out. Um, so I just have a mix of the colors that, like I said, either, either colorway, I've just chosen either what I had or what I liked best. And um, because I'm making so many changes, you know, I'm just, I'm, as I go, I have to laugh because I did, I was um, talking to my friend Shelly, it's only stitching. And I mentioned that the fool's gold is such a varied color. Did I put that on here? It's such a wildly varied color between silver and gold. I was like, how am I ever going to get that one, use that one? And literally the end of that very same day, here we go. I had ended up using it for the banner that the lamb is carrying. Look at the, the changes in that color. And um, I think I'm going to use it for one of the crowns. So that made me laugh because I was like, I don't think I'm going to use that color. And then I ended up using that color. Okay, so let me put this here so it doesn't get on there. All right. Then this was a surprise for me to pull out recently. Emma Styles by Victorian Rose Needle Arts. I just, you know, I have a lot of bigger projects and things that won't be finished for quite a while. And I thought, you know what, maybe... This one is close enough. I can get some work done on her. But here's the challenge now. I've moved everything around. You'll notice I've moved everything around. I am not sure that I can get by without doing the border. So I haven't started the border. I wasn't planning on stitching the border. But as I look at her, I feel as if she will be, she will benefit from the border. So I may have to do still do that, which means she's now very far away from a finish. I have um, one more basket here, and I'm going to put some of the birds in here, a couple of other little motifs scattered about. And then I was going to try to pull a frame and see what it looks like in just a, you know, a very ornate frame and see if that'll work without the border. But otherwise, I love that. Isn't that basket of flowers? That's really pretty. Um, again, I used a lot of the called for colors. This is the called for Victorian pink. I think my notes say this is 40 count vintage maple sugar. Okay. <laughs> my notes say that. I, I'm not sure that it is. But anyway, um, Victorian pink is the call for pink. And then if I didn't have some of the other flosses, I just made substitutions because there are quite a few floss colors in here. But a lot of them are called for. So 
I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to pull out a frame and then we'll see. Renee, do I need a border on that one? Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. But we also have a little chit chat about this one. So pretty. Eliza Brown from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And I'm stitching this with my friend um, Steph, Lake Girl Stitches, as well as Shelly. It's only stitching has a small start on this. So that's what happened with Eliza. Some of the called for colors, again, there's um, there's some silks and overdyes a combo. And if I had them, I used them. And if not, I just made subs. But here's what happened with Miss Eliza. She's so pretty. I just love her. Um, I think this is Up in the Attic by Fox and Rabbit, 40 count. And I was stitching along, going swimmingly. I got to, I counted over from here to here and stitched this tree. And then I think I moved up and stitched this motif and realized, I, went, I looked, I thought, hmm, this doesn't look like enough space because there's a whole nother, can you see it on here? There's a whole nother pot of flowers that is supposed to fit in between right here. And I thought, I don't, that doesn't look like enough space. Sure enough, I counted again. I am five spaces short in between here. Five, five spaces, not just one thread, five spaces. I, I suspect I know what I did. Um, and I also wonder, perhaps I was distracted. I don't know. Was I multitasking? Was I texting, you know, Shelly, Renee, Krista? I don't know. <laughs> At the same time, regardless, I do remember I only counted once and thought, no, no, I'm good. I was careful. And no, count twice. But I decided when I, I, I didn't want to pull this tree out. I didn't want to stitch it again. I didn't want to pull it out. Um, so I made some adjustments instead. And I changed this motif from the original one that was charted. I actually did not care for the one that was charted already. So I made that a little bit different and I just moved everything over. So a lot of these things up here got rearranged. Um, I know m many of us <laughs> would just frog it and say, you just have, no, I just did a bunch more planning, cutting, pasting, rearranging. So I have a lot of the motifs are still up there on the top, um, that big tree in the center, but I think I just moved them around a little bit. Yep, I think I just moved them around, maybe had to get rid of one, but it's gonna look beautiful. I think it's gonna look just beautiful. So, Eliza Brown. Okay, let's see who's next. This was a surprise as well. There's no order to any of this. Uh, Miss Lucy Calcutt, I started her a while ago and I was looking for a quick piece to sit down and stitch on for Zoom. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll fill in more of my roof. And so I grabbed her and, and she was on some Q-snaps already. So pulled her out. Now, did I stitch on the roof? No, I decided I'd rather get some more done on the grape bush uh, over here to the side. And I was trying to stitch the leaves in here and I, I pull out one of those leaves, the little tiny leaves like twice because it was counting, very much counting. So um, I am changing up the colors as you can see on the, the, the motif up there. I'm making them all, all of the grapes will be this color and the flowers. I think I'm making them all the same instead of the fact that they were slightly different colors here, you can see. And I'm not stitching this top portion. So I'm only gonna stitch the bottom and I'm not sure about this part down here, although I really do like it. So this is 40 Count Vanilla by Color and Cotton. Love these, it's all DMC colors. And I did get a little bit more of the roof, just a little bit more and a little bit of that window. So having to break that house down a lot of the window fill in is gonna be what's gonna be um, challenging for me. There's a lot of windows in this house. So pretty, but you know, I, and I, then I put her away and the next day when I came back, I was like, oh, I wish I'd left her on the cue snaps because I would really like to stitch some more on her. Okay, oh my gosh, do I love this one so, so much. Um, the Bird of Paradise, Leo Nora Craft from Etsy. And I did put the name, it's, you can't really see it very well down here. I did put the name in my last video. Can you see that down there for her Etsy store? She's on Instagram under Leonora Craft, and so you can get a link to her, her Etsy store from there. 
Somebody asked me recently when I posted this, am I stitching the whole thing? Not sure. I love the whole thing. There's no reason I wouldn't, but I did wonder if after stitching this portion, I could see what it looks like in an oval frame. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, ha I didn't know for sure. Now, this is a piece of linen that started out as 40 count light mocha by Zweigart, and I dyed it with some writ dye, some camel and some taupe. And um, I talked about that the last time about how I did that. So, and let me show you, you know, you have to be careful mixing up your dye because the back has some blotches. Can you see those blotches? So I was fortunate that that was just on the back. It was obviously the way I wadded it all up and stuck it in the jar. Some of the dye wasn't uh, dissolved well enough, but fortunately the front looks good. So called for colors. There are a couple of uh, cotton over dyes. I think the red is um, Louisiana hot sauce, but most of them are DMC colors. And I gave I gave um, my bird a head and filled it a little bit more leaves and a little bit more of the wing. And so uh, there's just a lot of leaves, a little bit more of the wing left, and then a bunch of leaves to stitch. And then I will I, then I will decide. I have enough fabric to do whatever I want to do, but I will decide what it looks like in an oval frame, much like the um, the visitor over here. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, Ann Johnson, 1832. This is a Sal uh, stitch along through, and this is an exclusive um, chart by Hands Across the Sea samplers available through traditional st stitches in Canada. And I did have high hopes that I would keep up with the stitch along, but that hasn't happened. I'm already behind not too worried about it. it. It doesn't really matter to me if I'm finished at the same time and I am making a lot of changes to her so I can't really follow their exact, um, the way they've broken it down. Now the windows are um, a very unique uh, type of a cross stitch. It's elongated or I'm not sure. They looked a little tricky and I think that they are a little tricky. So uh, Stitching Faye, Heidi, she mentioned, yeah, they were a little tricky. Uh, I think Rose Heck said it as well, uh, the fearless leader of the stitch along, Rose Heck. So I haven't decided. I have to look at it again and decide whether I'm going to fuss with having it stitched like that or just make an adjustment so I can do regular cross stitch. But this is, is it Tickety Boo? I think is the, um, I got the linen and the chart from traditional stitches as part of a kit. Um, and then I'm just using the DMC flosses. It looks like there's a bit of a shadow. There we go, DMC flosses. And like I mentioned, um, making some changes as well. The trees, you can see that the trees coming out of the house are stitched in different colors on each side. One's green, one's yellow. Um, I am going to do them both in yellow, as well as, uh, I'm not stitching this side portion here. I'm gonna move up these little flowers at the bottom. I'm gonna move those up to the side of the house. There are a lot of other things that I, I'm doing, but I'm, I'm gonna go I'm going to make decisions as I go as to exactly what I want to do. But I am going to stitch the border. Those flowers are beautiful. The colors are beautiful. Yeah, I really love this. That's what drew me to this piece. All these colors, the beautiful. And, and the motifs are just gorgeous. I mean, that bird and the baskets of flowers down here. Just beautiful. All right, so Ann Johnson. Okay, this was another, I pulled out quite a few that we haven't seen in a while. And a lot of that is inspired again by Flosstube and Instagram. This is, there's a new Flosstuber, is it Crow River? Crow, oh, I'm so sorry, Sheila. I'll put her, uh, I'll link her below. It's Crow River Stitcher or River Crow Stitcher. I'm so sorry, I should have double checked. Um, anyway, I was watching her floss tube. She has two videos out now that I've seen and she showed this as one of her whips and I said, oh my gosh, I have that as well as Anne, uh, selfish stitcher, selfish underscore stitcher on Instagram has been sharing her progress with the, of this with me and um, it's just beautiful. So I keep getting motivated by these ladies and I decided to pull this back out. Mojo stitches. This was a Christmas present from a friend. And I am using um, a substitute. I'm subbing some silks for the grass. And I'm going to do, I 
and the deer, but I think I'm going to do some DMC, not non um, variegated flosses for the dress because there's a lot going on already. So I'm not, I want to make sure I'm careful with not choosing things that are too variegated. So, oh, what is this one stitched on? Ooh, that's a good question. I'll have to put that in the box. I didn't remember to look this one up. So, can you see that? Is that shadowed? I think I have to pull back a little bit. Made a lot of progress though. The deer, lots of the, I mean, I didn't have a lot done on this when I started. So this deer is just so much fun. I wanna work my way over to, is it a, I think it's a, a lamb sitting in the grass on the other side. I wanna work my way over to that. Oh, I'm so sorry I forgot to look up what linen this is. All right, then we have, okay, this is fun. I love working on this one. Peacock, unicorn, a badger, the scarlet letter. Now I am making lots of adjustments, which is part of the fun. I've stitched this whole top part here now, I believe, most of it. And now I'm gonna add this bottom part here up next to it. And I have decided I'm going to stitch the water. So it's, you'll see a lot of threads because I have a lot of working threads as I work my way through what I'm stitching with the trunk, how I'm stitching over from the reindeer and how I'm gonna adjust this part up here. Like I said, it's, it's, a lot of, um, it's a lot of cut and paste and thinking as I go. So I did have to leave a lot of trailing threads on this. I couldn't button them all up. <laughs> so here we go. This is 40 Count Fossil by Fox and Rabbit. So I'm not stitching the background because this fabric is beautiful. As you can see, I've got enough, I've got enough linen to, uh, to do the, the water down below. And um, I'm using all the called for DMCs, except for, I think, I don't remember what the called for color was, but the snail, I think I changed it to DMC 433 because I wanted it darker than whatever the call for color was there. I also don't like the color, the eye is stitched, but you can't see it. So I'm gonna go back and make the eye a darker stitch. I noticed that, so. I'm going to do some outlining. Um, I saw someone stitch that the way they outlined a bit of it and then went back and filled in. So I'm gonna do some outlining on some of the motifs to help me get some placement issues figured out. Oh, isn't she so pretty? Stitching this with my friend Diane, the woodpecker's daughter. Okay, so I really, I don't know, that one might might happen um, later today because I am excited to figure out some more, like I said, some more placement. Uh, but it's also, I was reminded when I was watching um, Trisha as one of the guests on Grace the Paisley Stitcher on her video, and she had mentioned about Feathered Friday, my the hashtag I created years ago, hashtag Feathered Friday SAL. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I gotta get back to stitching birds on Fridays. Um, all right, so now I think we're in new starts. And this one I saw pop up at, on Instagram as a sneak peek. She was showing um, her, her, uh, her progress and then said it would be released on Saturday on her Etsy store. And so uh, Saturday, you bet your bottom bibby I went over there <laughs> and got this downloaded. It's a Heart Song Stitchery and Dye Works. Here's the name of her Etsy store, Heart Song, and that's the name of the design. So pretty. Oh, the colors and the bird. That's what obviously drew me in. I did put it in a little, just a little placemat that I folded and stitched up the sides to make as a project bag. And this is 40 count vintage exemplar by Lakeside Linens, but it's just, I mean, there are a lot of different colors that you can stitch this on. Um, I'm not stitching, there's a, a border, just a thin border all the way around it. I don't think I'm gonna stitch that part. And I will make it into probably a, a small pillow. And so I'm using the call for DMCs. I think it's all DMC. So far, I'm using the call for anyway. Isn't that pretty? She's done just a great job of colors. 
Oh, it's so pretty. It's um, not something I'm, I'm just pulling out when I, you know, little by little I stitched a flower and then maybe another day I stitched another flower and working on this one. So there's no, there's no big rush on this one. I'm stitching that. Um, Krista, did you start Krista? The wildflower stitcher. Look for another video from my friend Krista. Hopefully this weekend she's going to make another video. Um, and some other friends. Uh, are, we're stitching that together. Okay, so this one, a lot of you are stitching this with us. How fun. Hashtag uh, Emmeline, stitching Emmeline is the hashtag this. I'm stitching this with my friend Audrey, stitch stitch bead here on FlossTube and Instagram. And many of you have said you're going to join. Um, Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher got a small start, as well as uh, Christine from, oh, Christine. Mountain Craft Studios. I think she said she was going to start it with us. I'm trying to get Karen Combs to start it. And I, 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 I didn't write down all the names. I'm sorry. I know you, you make these videos and you think you got it all up here and, and then you don't. So I'm glad lo lots of you are joining us. It's a lot of fun. So these are my colors because I'm not doing all of the called for. As a matter of fact, I don't know if any of these are the called for. Um... Oh, some of them might. Okay, so let me show you really quickly. Peanut brittle. Now, pomegranate can be very uh, tricky because there are a lot of different dye lots of pomegranate by Gast. I'm using the cognac. Pretty sure I might have done sassafras for the door. I think I'm going to use cognac for the roof. I may use sweet potato for the roof. I haven't decided yet. And then I'm using olive for my border. Right. Oh, where is it? It's over here. Olive is my border. Yeah. And um, putty is the house color. So those are the colors that I've chosen so far. I'm not sure if I if I need to choose more as I go along. I think there's going to be more colors in there I haven't decided on yet. But here is where I've gotten so far. Now this is again, this is Lynn and I had from a kit I got from a retreat and I don't know what it is. So it's just a a tan, a brown goldy tan. Um, Audrey is using the called for 103 silks and they're beautiful, but she'll get a different look. For, uh, I, mine will be different from what hers is because of the fact that I'm not using the uh, um, the silks. Let me get all of my trailing threads out of the way. Okay, there we go. And this is where I've gotten to so far. I think it looks, it's pretty, I didn't do a bright red. It called for ribbon red and I didn't do the bright red, but I think my colors, oh, this is a little tricky show. I think my colors look like a pretty good um, match for the cover. It's doing a terrible job of this. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with those. So again, this is, you know, join us. This is, there's no time limit on this. We don't have it broken down in any kind of a stitching routine or anything. It's just stitch it and uh, tag us and have a lot of fun. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite market releases. Many of us. It was one of one of a uh, favorite market release for many of us. All right. Then this is another sal that I have. I started this with my local stitching group, um, Menifee Stitchers. And we decided we were going to stitch, is it on the cover? Rose hips and ivy. Oh, let me see if I can show you the, sometimes you can't get a very good picture in here. Here we go. It's going to be a drum. So rose hips and ivy or a pillow. And we've got to start on this. Um, this is the, I think I switched this out. So this is the trumpet of swans uh, kit linen that I'm using on this one. Well, I think it's Dames of the Needle something. And I do believe these are all the called. No, I did not use the saltwater taffy that it called for in the part here. And I just used, I think I just used some of the other flosses called for and, and use those instead of buying a whole skein for something. I didn't think I'd use it again. It's highly variegated. And I just thought, mm, I don't think there's going to be a lot of use for that. So. For tea. One more motif and border. Lots of borders to tea. 
Okay, another one. This was, uh, I was inspired by Nyx Days when I saw her stitching it. I'd, I'd loved it already and I saw her start it and I thought, I'm gonna get that. I got this from the attic. Um, Dorothy's Sampler by Fox and Rabbit. And I'm not, even though I love, I know Renee said, can't you fit this house in there somewhere? I actually love all of these motifs down here, but I think it looks better just this portion. I just, this looks very different to me on this sampler. So I'm just gonna stitch this top part. And I may change a few things up in here as well. What am I stitching this one on? Oh, I think this is 46 count white clay, right? I think so, by Fox and Rabbit. I could be wrong. And I'm using the DMCs making subs if I don't have them. I think I've gone rogue. Yeah, I'm making, that's right. This is hibiscus. The pink in the flower here is hibiscus instead of the um, the DMC. I think I just, I just chose some of my own colors. So it's a mix of over dyed and DMC. think that's what this is um, linen wise but I'll try to put it in the box below if I'm not right if it's not 46 count white clay I can't remember all right another new fun sal my friend Celeste from Celeste creates and Kara who's pink daisy stitch stitch stitcher <laughs> on Instagram uh, they said they were going to start this as an Easter day start and I I have that and I've been wanting to stitch it, start it over again. And so I'm going to stitch it. Now I'm doing it on the lighter color way with the lighter floss colors. Um, I think I'm using all of the called for lighter floss color uh, way, DMC. And I, this is the one we talked about last time where I said, uh, what do you think about fabric? And I did not use the Brea, though I loved the Brea. And thank you for those of you who voted for that. Um, most of us said aged paper. And I thought that's where I was leaning as well. So I'm doing the aged paper by Color and Cotton. And the only thing I wasn't sure about, this flower here, it has a lot of the colors, yellow, blue, red and I it I'm not sure that I want to make them all the different colors so I I left off stitching on that and moved up to something else before I decide um I might just stitch it all in red I feel like there's a shadow yep pretty very, very beautiful sampler. Oh, I'm going to put this down here so I don't put bends. Okay, it looks like that is, did I bobble you? Sorry. It looks like that is all of my stitching. Now we're just going to talk about some future plans that are going to happen here. Um, I did have one other, I forgot before I forget again, uh, Karen, the Stitching Owl. I told her I would show her my owl piece. This is by Kathy Barrick. It's called Peace on Earth. And it's one of these fun, I love stitching all these fun motifs. She has several of these out and I have a couple of the other charts. So I'd, I'd like to still stitch those as well. But I told Karen I would show that. So, okay. Now, this is another one I saw at the attic on my trip there where I got to hook up with my friend Renee, Prairie Stitcher 515. And she said, did you see this? And I said, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I have to have that. I'd like to have that. And I purchased it along with the called for NPI um, silk. And um, I just decided, you know, I really wanna get a start on this. and. I had often been thinking of my friend, so Laurel, who is I am a stitch nerd on Instagram and floss too. She shared last year, um, it's by Artful Offerings. Can't remember the name of the chart. And she shared it with me and said, I'm gonna stitch this. What do you think about this? And I said, Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. But at the time there was just no way I could I, I didn't I didn't decide to to put that into my um, stitching. I didn't decide to stitch that one. But I've always thought of Laurel and her beautiful finish. And I thought when I saw this one, it made me think of you, Laurel. And I asked her, I said, hey, I'm going to get this up and start it. She's like, I love it. I said, well, would you like to stitch it with me? She said, yes. So thank you so much for joining me, Laurel. 
Um, I also mentioned it to my friend Krista, the wildflower stitcher, and she's on board. And then I put it on Instagram and invited all of you. So I think a lot of you said, hey, I have that in my stash, or where do I get it? Now, I got this, as I mentioned, from the attic. Um, Laurel actually contacted the designer directly, hands to work, and I think she's getting it directly from her. Krista checked with the attic, and they did have one. I, I know they had another one because that's where she ordered hers. And um, if you want to see, oh, I should have looked up. I there's on Instagram. There's someone who's already finished this, and I but I'll put it below her name. And um, uh, my friend Jenny, um, needleworker on the go, also here on Floss Tube and Instagram. She has started this, and I said, hey, pull it back out and stitch it with us, right, Jenny? So um, I initially thought I would stitch there to there. So I would do these bands in here. But the more I look at it, the more I think I will probably just stitch this portion here. No surprise. None of you will be surprised I'm not stitching all the alphabets. There's some over one up there. And I, I just, this is the part that I want. So I did another little experiment with some Rit dye. And um, I used, again, my apparently camel and taupe are the two colors that I use the most. Here's the back. You can see you have options. So here's the back, which I don't care for. And here is the front, which I think came out really well. So I this one I did by, I mixed my camel and taupe in the mason jar, a little salt, a little vinegar, water, and I stirred it really, really well. But in order to avoid um, having the whole thing die, what did I start with? Platinum. I started with a piece of Zweigart Platinum. Um, I crinkle, I wet my fabric and crinkled it up and then I laid it in a flat, um, semi-flat, you know, like a little Tupperware dish and I scrunched it up a little bit. So there were a few hills and then I spooned, um, the, the dye over the top of it, all over it. But I mean, over the dot, the top. And that way I wouldn't, I knew that my, uh, it was mixed up really well and I wouldn't get any of the, the little grains. They come off of the lid. I take the lid and you know, there's kind of crinkles and I just pour it, pour it. And so I know that's what's happening being super careful but I like this I think this mimics the um I think this is vintage exemplar again for the cover which I couldn't get and I think this mimics that very well so that's what I'm going to do I have just a big enough piece to stitch the center and some of the bands if I decide to add them but um, that's going to be a start we're waiting uh on charts just uh um Laurel and Krista have to get their charts and um so again there's not going to be any kind of a, a particular timeline just stitch it with us if you'd like okay then I was watching um holly hobbies of holly is that right holly hobbies of holly uh, on floss tube love your floss tube holly and she in all of her um stitching and things that she was sharing she pulled out hannah elliott and I said oh man I want to start hannah and I, I, as a matter of fact, I was watching your video, Holly, and Instagram popped up. She had commented on something I'd posted. And I immediately went over there and said, hey, I'm watching you right now. And I said, and I want to stitch Hannah. And she said, let's stitch Hannah. <laughs> I said, okay. The only reason I hadn't started was because I just couldn't decide what to stitch on Hannah. Do I stitch the whole thing? Do I just stitch this bottom part? I know um, Needlework Press has just this top portion and then put it on a spool. And so that's a great option. It's so funny because I asked my husband, I said, sweetie, I need a consult. He rolled his eyes. <laughs> He's like, okay, because he knows I'm teasing. Um, but at the same time, I actually was curious. What was he going to say? I said, what, what would you stitch on this? And without even looking at it, he said the border because he knows I avoid borders. I said, okay, Mr. Sassy Pants. Let take a look at this. And what do you think? And I, I kind of blocked off. I said, okay, how about just this part? And he kind of made a face. I said, okay, well, how about just this part? And he said, well, I like the top part. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, well, that's what the designer did as a shortened version. So here's my thought. Do you have Hannah Elliott? Would you like to stitch Hannah Elliott with us? Um, I think I'm going to start from the bottom. I really, I really like this part. I, I love this part as well, but I really love this part. And I think I'm going to, I'm not going to put the part here. I'm going to start from the bottom. I'll leave room for the border. I don't think I'm going to have to stitch the border though, because I'm going to start here, work my way up, mm, decide about this do this band, do this band, love this band. And so I'll decide about that. 
and that just gives me, I, I starting here will take plenty of time. So it's not like I have to make any decisions right away. And I'll just have a piece of linen that's big enough to do all of it. Minus, you know, like this here and whatever piece of linen I have, that's what I'll stitch to because it's a big, she's a big girl on 40 count, which is typically what I stitch at. She finishes up at 15.9 by 25.4. So that's not a lot of margin on a, like a 27, you know, um, we'll see. So we'll see how much linen I have. And I think that'll be the deciding factor for me because I'm not going to buy a half yard, um, to stitch this on. I have plenty of linen. I, I'm sure I can find something that'll work. So Holly said that she was going to see what I decided. <laughs> So Holly, that wasn't very helpful, was it? I'm not very decisive. Um, join us if you've got Hannah and you want to stitch a portion, Oliver. Uh, I think Steph, again, Lake Girl Stitches, Steph's already gotten a start on this. So follow her on Instagram if you want to see. I know she's stitching the whole thing. It's beautiful. So that's going to be an upcoming sale. Um, Holly, I just got to get my stuff together. Like I said, now the beginning of May uh, right at the, pretty much the beginning of May, I'm gone for like 11 days. So I only have between now and then to get things started and to get some progress. And then it'll be when I get back, of course, I'll pick up on stitching. So now I have a couple of other new purchases that I want to share with you. These were market releases that I had asked for Quilter Station to pick up. No, sorry, for Grand Country Quilts to pick up for me. And I got to pick them up when I went there to the stitching day. Uh, this is one I'm going to be stitching with my friend Shelly. It's only stitching uh, for her birthday. We're going to have a birthday start. Well, May 8th is her birthday and I'll be gone during that time. So I hope I can get a start. But if not, I'll get it. I'll start when I get back. So love this one. Shelly loves cats. I don't have cats, but I've always loved cats. So that'll be a fun stitch. And Maggie May. Holly's looking for Maggie May. I know she's out, out everywhere, but she'll come back and there'll be more. So um, I, this is another one. We're going to stitch this with uh, Sandy. So stitch in with Sandy and uh, the Zoom group. Sandy hosts a groom, a, a Zoom, the second and fourth Sunday of every month. And so contact Sandy on Instagram or message her on her, um, her floss tube and say you'd like to join and come join us. It's from 10 to 2 Pacific Standard Time on those particular Sundays. I, I race home from church and try to jump on as fast as I can. So we decided we're going to stitch something together and starting in May, I think we said, right? Um, so I'm going to try to get Maggie May ready to go. Should be, should be good for a plane, right? Should be good on a plane. And then uh, another one I got from my market release, one of my favorites, Flights of Fancy, Italian, 1801. This will be a perfect Feathered Friday SAL stitch. Today's Friday. Honestly, by the time I'm done making videos, I usually need a nap, lunch and a nap. <laughs> and then when I'm, when I'm feeling better, there will be some stitching. So this would be a good one. I don't know. It takes a lot for me to get everything kitted up. It's not kitted up yet. So that probably won't happen today, but soon. And then this is actually a gift, but I wanted to show it to you. I got this for a friend. Um because it's just so cute. So you won't see me stitching this one, but I just thought maybe you'd like it because I um, placed an order from Olivia at Hillside Rookery. Let me show you her card because I had asked her a while ago. Let me show you her card. Super fast uh, service. I ordered it through her Etsy store and it was just in the mail. Too sweet. Um, I had seen my friend Phoebe, who is Moonshine Stitchery, share this chart. She hasn't started it. I think it was just a chart that she had. And I said, oh, I really like that. And uh, Carriage House Samplings, you know, Olivia carries a lot of Carriage House Samplings. It's one of her favorite, if not her favorite designer. Um, and so I went to her store and she didn't have it. And I messaged her and I said, hey, are you going to carry this one? She said, oh, I've not seen that one before. Why don't I have that? And so she said, it'll be a while. And I said, I'm not in any hurry. So she ordered it on her last video. She did an unboxing. And this is one that she just now has in her store. So if this is something you're interested in, head on over to Hillside Rookery. I don't think I'll stitch the bottom part. But you'll recognize the top is one of my current um, whips. Which I'm going to draw a blank in. It'll take too much brain power to think of right now. It's very similar. So that's something I want to get started at some point. 
All right, then I have some purchases. And these are because of my friend Lisa, who is little Annie Z and Mama Z here on FlossTube. I hope that you're watching Lisa. She is, she's just, she's beautiful. She's kind. She's generous. And she is a very, I, look at me. I, it just, <laughs> it's so silly. Okay, no tears. We're good. Um, she is very much an, uh, an enabler for me because she's a very good, uh, she's very good at designing things like letting, putting little vignettes together, great ideas, finishing ideas. She's just so talented. She always makes me go shopping. So a few videos ago, she shared these little, you know, glass cleaners and I got them from Amazon and I just, they're just nice little um, gifts, you know, if you need something really quick. So I thought those were pretty. I got those. This last video, she showed this fabric. Um, that she got and I went looking for it and I found it on Etsy from a shop called quitches is that what we're saying quitches get stitches quitches get stitches on etsy and i ordered that and it got sent to me very quickly i ordered a couple of yards because i was still thinking about first of all i just i love it um but i was thinking that um there molly had mentioned a bag maker oh gosh i should have looked up her name again and she um she makes the mary poppins bags holly what's her name and she said, if I found fabric and I sent it to her, like, you know, two yards of an outside, two yards of an inside, she could make the bag, you know, anything I wanted. So that's an option. I'm holding that thinking maybe that would be something I would like. And then this was also from Lisa. Again, another, I think just another good gifty idea. She showed these um, notebooks and there are different, oh, this, I don't want to open the plastic. But anyway, I got those because I think those would be good gifts as well. So thank you for that um lisa and lisa's close to a thousand so uh, i hope that you'll go over there and subscribe to her floss tube and help her get to a thousand subscribers um i think that's everything i have the cutest easter card ever <laughs> to share with you my friend deborah who is a card maker a paper crafter made this for me for for easter this year oh my gosh isn't that just the cute this is a day this is a day all that die cutting and she's very busy grandma full time works and she doesn't often have a day to craft and the fact that she gave this to me after she made it oh but we've been friends from forever and she's coming to visit i'm so excited so um oh my gosh so cute all right i think i think that's everything i have notes but i really feel like I told, oh, I didn't. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I looked. So Floss Tube, I found a, she's not new, but I had heard her mentioned. So Sew Me Sarah showed a piece that she's stitching on. It is Well With My Soul, I think it says. And um, she mentioned it was by Sarah, the rocking chair stitcher. And I said, oh my gosh, well, I love the design. There's a border. I, so Sarah, I'd love to stitch it, but that border is probably not gonna happen for me. But it made me go, hmm, there's a designer. And if she stitches other things that have scripture, I'm interested. As well as I remembered after I went over there, I was like, oh my gosh, my friend Darlene from Darlene, D Darlene Dion Designs has mentioned her. I know she's mentioned her. And how have I not ever gone over to watch her floss tube? She's, Sarah, I love your videos. I'm all caught up now. You're a delight. Um, I hope that you'll consider going over and uh, put the rocking chair stitcher all one word because I think it was hard for me to find her until I done I had done that. Um, and I just, I just, you'll, you'll love her. She's just, she's just charming. So, and she's a designer. So she has some cute little designs. She just put out one with, um, watermelons, right? Um, okay. That says my notes. That's, that's all they say. So I think that's everything. What else? Uh, yep. That's it. My husband is going to share scripture. So I hope that you'll stay, but that is all the stitching. Um, go ahead and please let me know if you're joining any of the cells that I've mentioned. And forgive me if I've forgotten to mention that you are already joining one of these cells. I will uh, do better next time to make more comprehensive notes for that. And I hope that you're enjoying everything you're stitching on. Thank you for coming to visit with me. I know there's a lot of us out there. And so thank you for spending some time with me. And uh, I will see you all hopefully soon. I'm going to try to squeeze in another one before I go on my trip. So that would be a couple of weeks. So hopefully that'll happen. But it, with everything that's happening, it may not, it might be a while and maybe a while before I can, I can make another video. But anyway, it's lovely to visit with you. I hope everyone take care. I'll see you all soon. Welcome back. Thank you again for allowing me to share some scripture with you today. 
Um, on the last video, I shared with you the Christian doctrine of justification. And as a quick reminder, uh, that doctrine is stating that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, God declares us righteous based on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's a one-time act when we're born again. Um, we can now call, us, call ourselves children of God. But then what? Um, so I wanted to talk to you today about the next step in our, our Christian walk, and that's what we call sanctification. And basically, that is a it's the lifelong process of walking with God, becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. Uh, that happens when we are studying our Bibles, when we're in prayer, and we're being obedient to his word. Um, it is a lifelong process until the Lord takes us home, you know, by death or rapture. So I just wanted to share a few scriptures with you out of the New Testament about uh, the doctrine of sanctification. Um, the first is Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. And Paul writes, Not that I've already attained all this, or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So again, that passage, Paul, uh, being a Christian for many years, uh, uh, realized that he had not come to the full, uh, his full goal of becoming more and more like Jesus, um, but he was pressing on uh, towards that goal. Uh, the second scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, and Paul again writes, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So Paul's writing there that we, as we go through our walk, are being transformed into his glory as we walk the Christian walk. And then lastly, I wanted to share uh, Jesus uh, uh, talking about this in John chapter 17, when he's uh, praying to the Father. It's John chapter 17. I'm going to share verses 17 through 19. And it says, sanctify them by, your, by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them, being us Christians, into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. So just in closing, uh, you know, Jesus says that sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So, you know, as we go through our Christian walk, um, we are going to stumble. You know, we still have these fleshly bodies, these sinful bodies, and we're going to sin daily. But we, you know, we confess our sins to him, and he's faithful and just to forgive us of those sins. But in order for us to become more and more like him, Jesus is pretty clear. It says that sanctify them by your truth, and the word is truth. So by studying his word, by reading his word, by meditating on his word, by being in prayer, by being obedient to his word, by the power of the Holy Spirit filling us, is how we become more and more sanctified, set apart from this world. Um, anyways, thank you again for sticking around and allowing me to share these scriptures with you. I hope they've blessed you guys. And um, my prayer for all you all is to uh, truly take your, uh, take your walk seriously and uh, becoming more and more like him as we are obedient to his word. God bless you all.